Hello everyone. So this is the part two for advanced GUI in MATLAB. So let's construct a basic or very simple Simulink model. So let's take a transfer function, then a step input and a clock for plotting. And for viewing the output, we'll paste the sync. And then we'll use a sim out block. In earlier, in earlier sessions, we have seen the idea or the usage of each and every block shown. So let's set some variable so that we can control it from outside so that it will be D final and then the voltage output as V final. And then transfer function itself will make it a second order with coefficients as A and B. So and let's set the configuration parameters. So here it's a very simple, pretty simple model. So we'll be using a fixed step ODE. And let's go for Range Gutta. Step size for time being as 0 0.001. Note it is it does affect the simulation. So let's save the model in .mdl format, preferably, so that it can be used in earlier versions of MATLAB also. So it is set, and before executing it, let's note the variables. So the variables are t final, the t final then the V final in the step input, and then A and B, the coefficients of transfer functions. So let's take A as 1, B as 1, and T final as 10. And let's initialize V final as 5. So now we initial values are present in the workspace, so it can execute. And finally, we get the array of T and Y, that is the output. So this stuff we have seen in the earlier sessions, how to adjust, how to obtain the array and the plot from Simulink to the script. So let's type the plot command, plot t comma y. So we get the same results. And the idea with, with which we use the variables was we can change it from the outside without entering into the model. So t final 20 and when we execute it, and plot, we get the results for the input. The results for the controlled input. So the stuff which we did right now in the command prompt, we'll be doing it via a GUI. So note, these are the variables, five to six variables. Like A, B, A, B, then T final, V final, and the output, T and Y. So let's make a simple GUI. Adjusting the canvas as desired. So taking a static but button, static element. And then we'll enter using a space. Like we'll enter or we'll freeze the paragraph using spaces. Space and then B. So paragraph spacings are preserved. So let's take an edit box where user will be entering the values. And let's set the values to, or the string values to the amount which we require. And we'll set the tags properly. We'll duplicate the same edit box four times. And we'll set the string and the tag properly. And then for A and B also.
let's save the jiva so as soon as we save a script of function file appears so let's create a push button also and we'll name this as simulate and plot then for viewing the output we'll so let's execute it once so the values are proper and we have to program or code our push button so for that we'll create the global variables of t final v final a b and also for the results that is t and y to access it back so t final v final and then a and b and to so this will be the input initializing inputs so once we execute our model we'll get we need to access two more variables that is t and y so we'll initialize them also and then we'll define the variables the global variables with some values that is initializing value here initializing value here so we'll be obtaining the string and again note this is a number so we'll be accessing or converting this string to the number so one can use the double precision or the double data type so same thing we'll do for the v final a and b variables also and then we'll properly modify the tag button also so handles dot a val then handles dot b val for b b value and similarly for v final as we have so it's done for time being and the same global definition which we did for our function file there will paste and or will create the global variables in the global workspace also so as soon as we hit the simulate and plot button the values get assigned in the workspace so this initialized or this assigned workspace variables we can use or we can take these values to our simulink model and run it or execute it and then we can get the t and y value which will which will again use in our plot so for simulating we have noted the simulink file name so we'll type sim then file name so this statement that sim and with the file name it will execute or it will simulate the model itself and with simulation we'll get t and y value so we can use that t and y value for the plot so let's initialize the axis handles dot axis 1 and with the obtained t and x t and y value in the workspace will plot it and accordingly we'll set the x labels and y labels also so all set let's save and execute the file there we go so for the second order system which we have considered in the simulink model let me show you once again so this is the model so once we hit the push button it initializes the workspace runs the or executes the simulink model and obtains the array or the output variables and we are seeing the output also so here we can change the transfer function or v final d final every value directly controlled from this ui so it forms a very good interface for especially for tutors who need to like who need to provide the students or the learners with the idea or the usage or the
So it comes very handy for demonstrating the usefulness or de- demonstrating the idea of a model without going into the details of model itself.